professional and we are live so no swearing ish well at least what i try and do is get started without any swearing you know you can throw it in in the end because by then people kind of know you a little bit better so uh good evening everybody and you're very welcome to my show i'm actually calling it my show now i'm totally owning it um uh, facing fears and this evening I have the lovely Laura O'Connell joining me from the People's Republic down in Cork. Laura is a, a business and careers coach and she also is the founder of the Entrepreneurs Network in Cork as well and we've just been getting to know each other over the last few months and oh we share a birthday as well. So yeah, we're two fiery air, two fiery uh, fire signs on today, two Aries. So, um, so we're talking about fears, Laura. We're talking about getting out of your comfort zone. So when you are faced with a new challenge, when something's coming up for you that you would like to do, but it scares the crap out of you, how does that show up for you? How do fears show up for you in your life? Hmm. That's an interesting question. So this would actually be a fear of mine. And today I've really been facing those, as I said to you earlier, uh, I've done a couple of videos today. And honestly, that kind of stuff scares the bejesus out of me. It really does. So just before I came on here, I had to sit with myself, some deep breaths, and then just kind of go, you know what, you've got this, you know, and have a bit of fun doing it, be yourself, People are going to judge. People are going to critique anyway. That's not the stuff I'm worried about. For me, when you're kind of on a platform um, like this, it's out of your control. Mm. So this is what I'm really starting to learn and become aware of. If I'm in a room, I have no problem. Um, initially, yes, there's a little bit of, you know, there's nervousness and build up before you kind of hit the, the front of a room or a stage area. Um, but at least I'm in control. I can see people, I can gauge their reactions. I know when to lift it or when to kind of cool it down a bit or get serious and professional or, you know, it's all of that. But this stuff, it's like. It, it's really surrendering um, a lot of control to this process. Yeah. And I think you have to leave a little bit of, well, a little bit. You kind of have to leave your ego at the door because, you know, if somebody doesn't or if somebody puts up something that you don't like, I think that's the first place that it hits. It hits in that ego and that there's that instant need to want to defend ourselves. Yeah, well, I'm going to say that to this person. And if they were to say that to my face, I'm, the fists go up. So, you know. That must be a Galway thing. <laughs> it's a Connemara thing, actually. Can I say, you know. <laughs> Feisty, fiery Connemara lady. Um, yeah, you know, like it is when... and. It is very courageous to actually put yourself out there into this ether where it is unknown and you have all these brave heroes that hide behind their laptops making negative remarks and it's it's hard not to take that personally. How do you do that? How do you not take it personally? I don't know. Um, hmm. That's a good question, actually, isn't it? How do you not take that personally? You couldn't if you're human. Um, mm. You know, nobody is that thick skinned. Um, you know, it's at the end of the day. And as you said, leaving the ego at the door, you can't please everybody and horses for courses. Mm. Um, you know, you and I will be each other's cup of tea, but we might not be, you know, mary's cup of tea and um yeah for me it's 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 connection okay well if you're just if you don't get it or you don't like what it's about if it, i mean there's a difference between um negative or critical to rude and abusive um yeah, yeah we have boundaries there for sure but the yeah um, like what do you say it's if i haven't done anything wrong intentionally wrong well then i try to to brush it off but mm -mm. That's been a huge work in progress for sure. Still is. Um, I know my dad about... used to always, my dad used to have a saying, you can please some of the people some of the time, but you can't please all of the people all of the time. And, you know, I think those that I, I, I personally always wonder why people feel the need to leave a negative comment because I, I just wouldn't be bothered. If I don't like something, I just switch it off. So I think it's about accepting that there's, 
a, a poor awareness in and it it's not coming from a place of self-love. That's the one thing I know for absolute certain is that people who are who are negative and who are judgy and who feel this need to make nasty remarks towards people, they are not in a place of high self-esteem and self-love. They're more self-loathing. So it, I find that generating empathy and a bit of compassion towards, they're clearly not in a very good place in their own head that helps after a while, after a few days of maybe the, 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 the running around in your head. It is, yeah. And yeah. just remember as well, that's their perception. Um, something else is forming their perception of you. So um, I've had people uh, comment to me in a, people even I'm close to, and I know, and they mean it in a constructive way. I'm a very open person and I'm always looking for feedback, always looking to improve. And somebody could, you know, pass a comment to me and I'm like, where are you? That's just off the Richter scale. How did you come up with that? Maybe you're not aware of A, B and C and what led to A, B and C. And then maybe you need to be a bit more mindful of what's going on with your A, B and C. Mm. Um, but people can just really put two and two together and come up with the craziest number, um, you know. But you're right. What is the point in wasting energy? And I think for us, it is not attaching to not attaching meaning to, you know, and that's often what happens is somebody who makes a mark and the first thing you do is what do they mean by that? And, you know, really, what does it matter from our perspective? It's only when we start thinking about what they meant by it that we cause ourselves pain. So if we just stop that process, stop ourselves in the track and say it doesn't matter what it meant to them because it doesn't mean anything to me and I know that's not always easy but I do find that it helps me to to let go of things so when you're faced with fears have you ever noticed that something else comes up so you know maybe there's something that you want to do but you're holding yourself back because oh I can't do that now because you know so kind of how does that show up for you so, you know, this, you know, um, fight or flight type of response. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm the one who freezes. OK, um, unfortunately, I, I just freeze. So you you basically be dinner for, you know, whoever's trying to hunt you down. So really all anybody needs to do is outrun you and your grand. <laughs> yeah. You know, and it's uh, and it's I've never been aware of this. It's been other people who've made me aware of it. Um, and I think I became better aware of it when I got physically attacked one time uh, quite near my home um, by a crazy person. But I just stood there and, and I took the walloping uh, and it was almost as if I was having this outer body experience. And that critical voice in my head was like, what are you doing? There were swear words in there. You just going to sit there? stand there at this stage I'm on the floor nearly curled over um, and I'm still and if it wasn't for a passing neighbor who came to my assistance I would have been well leathered but so I tend to freeze um, so then when I became more aware of that I tried to avoid I'd, I'd start to avoid I'd shut down mm -hmm. I'd disengage I'd disconnect um, but now that I'm becoming you know better you know better emotionally intelligent um, it's learning how to face these fears and, you know, coming on social media and opening back up because of the experience that I've had on social media, again, by another different crazy person. Um, sometimes you just kind of have to do it. And you were part of that journey as well with me. And even when I talk about it, I hear, you know, I feel it close. I feel the shoulders. I feel a little tremor coming. So for me straight away, I'm becoming more aware of my physical reaction mm. and responses. I can feel my, my breath starting to shallow now, but it was only getting involved um, in that SOS platform um, when the COVID struck us and engaging in Martha Fraser's um, lunch online coffee break and then yeah. onto the SOS and okay I have no I still am nowhere near developing an online platform but part of that was getting more comfortable with it and engaging in, in things more like this so it was just the support of others 
um, allowing myself to, you know, be honest, disclose a little bit of what's going on with me. Um, and in doing that, then I softened with myself as well. I wasn't so harsh and critical or pressurizing or forceful. Um, yeah, but it was just having the support of just some really beautiful people. And I don't mean, be you know, beautiful souls and beautiful yeah. spirit. It was just, you know what, I can do it. If I don't do it now with these people around me, um, I'll never do it. And then my other mechanism is just one of these days, click, it happens and I'm done and I'm doing it. Yeah. <laughs> So, and yeah. I guess it is that, you know, it's vulnerability. It always comes back to feeling vulnerable and wanting to protect ourselves. And sometimes we can just kind of wrap ourselves up in bubble wrap and go, I'm grand now. I'm nice here and I'm nice and safe and it's lovely and cozy here in my bubble wrap. But, you know, after a while in that safe space in the bubble wrap, life starts to get very boring. And it starts to get very samey. And it's only until we can kind of unwrap ourselves and go, okay, this is going to hurt like a mofo, but I need to get out of here and put myself out there. But I guess having a support group around you, having, and you don't need to have 50 million people around you either. It just needs to be a few people that are kind of, they've got your, your back kind of, Thing. It needs to be the right people, um, you know, some, it just needs to be, you know, maybe the right timing and the right environment. For, but for me recently, it just seemed to be the right people. Um, and maybe the timing was right for me as well. Um, so, yeah, it was, uh, I, I don't, I would love, I look at these influencers and even people like yourself who just seamlessly present in front of social media and have no problem in selling yourselves and marketing yourselves and the visibility and the, the marketing that goes with it and helping others where I'm like, wow, how do you do it? It's um... Yeah, well, see, now that is the thing, because I don't think that anybody starts out and goes, you know, oh, this is easy. I'm amazing. I'm just going to put all my stuff out there. And the first time I did a video, I just had to record it and put it up and go, I'm never watching that again because I hate the sound of my own voice and I look like a tool. And But I just, for me, I just was like, you get over yourself, girl. Like you really have to get over yourself. And yeah, sure, there might be people out there who are gonna go, oh God, I don't like her. But equally, there could be other people that value what you have to say. And I think that's really has been, and, and the more, but it has taken me, years to fully lean into that and to just really? to go with it years and i what i found is the more and more that i can just be myself just be you as if you were having a conversation sitting across having a coffee and when i do that i'm okay because you just it comes effortlessly don't have to try then i don't have to be thinking it. About it. yes exactly yeah. and I just have found that if I can I, if I can look at what I'm doing and what I'm involved in and ask myself, is it fun? Am I having fun? And if the answer is no, well, then it's not for me. So stop doing it. And if the answer is yes, then woohoo, do more of it. <laughs> so and I, I just I was on a lovely call. I'm part of Michael Neal's inner circle and super coach club so i would i would i suppose lean a lot towards the three principles in my style of coaching um which wouldn't necessarily be uh very well known but um michael neil is an amazing coach but he was on on a call and he was talking about you have to get in the game even if you don't know if you want to be in the game but how are you going to know if you want to be in the game if you're not willing to just give it a try and i i was just i thought yeah you know, we're so far so we're far too invested in the idea that something has to have a specific outcome. And if we can't have an some kind of an assurance that it's gonna look a certain way, we don't even try. But what if you just said, nah, I'm just gonna give it a go. Might work, might not work. Who cares? If if yeah. we all had that ability, what would happen to fear then? Hmm. Imagine. Yeah. 
Yeah, you'd be surprised. You know? And I'm, do you know, I'm sure if it was that easy, we'd get bored. Um, you know, if there's no challenge in it, especially for us Aryans anyway, if there's no challenge, we definitely get bored very easy. Yeah. And and I, I, I mean, I do like a challenge and I like something that gets my gets me excited. But that is how I look at it now. I look at, oh, this is exciting. And I try not to view it as anxiety, which it often it's a fine line like between the two of them. You know, what's that churning in my stomach? Is it fear or is it anxiety? Um but I just sort of go, it's, it's exciting. But yeah, sometimes there is, there's an unknowing about what the outcome is going to be. And that's what I try to just not think about. Hmm. That's the control. Which is kind of not. Yes. Yeah. It's letting go and um, giving into it really. Um, mm. Yeah. So that's definitely and I guess a factor. For you, when you, you know, when you push through fears, and you, I call it platform nine and three quarters. So that's, you know, the Harry Potter, that's my, my analogy is Harry Potter runs at the wall and the magic's on the other side. So when you run at your platform nine and three quarters and you get out the other side, what is it, what, what's it like for you? Or what does it feel like when you've pushed through that fear? There's a great sense of um, achievement and accomplishment. Um, and, you know, when somewhat of a kind of pride or proudness in myself. And so that that's that's front and foremost. It's like I did it. It wasn't as bad after all. I ripped the bandaid off. Or as you said, I ripped it off like a mofo. And it's like, yeah. oh, and then all of a sudden <clears throat> the reality kicks in. It's like, oh, oh okay that was it what have i been building up for all this time um but i mean how many you know through life how many fears have we faced and all of that so mm. um, i've actually set myself a challenge for this year although maybe the universe is telling me something because we can't uh, we can't socialize right now i actually want to go and ask somebody out on a date for the first time ever um but now that i'm actually anyone in particular or just anyone i know someone that you know i really fancy or someone that it really it's like oh okay um because if you see me out and about i'm actually quite shy despite all that i might portray um, and especially in those kinds of situations so i'd set myself challenges for this year finish college which I'm nearly there now. I'm three quarters of the way there. Move online. That's a work in progress now as well. Mm -hmm. And I've taken huge uh, strides and leaps for that. And then to also ask somebody out. So um, yeah, I think the universe is um, really giving me a sign here. No, no, not maybe not time for you yet. <laughs> well, listen, you know, <laughs> Zoom dating. I mean, could it be any safer? You know, like, <laughs> oh, oh my Wi-Fi is down if it's not going well. So well, I can't hear you. It's getting a bit glitchy now. Oh why? Oh, oh, I just closed the, the babysitter. That's the babysitter. What do you mean there's an emergency? <laughs> oh, okay. Oh <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you could there could be something in it. There could be something in it. Yeah. yeah. Love in isolation. And then you see, you wouldn't even have to spend that much time with them. You know, you locked them. So yeah, yeah, there'd be some. <laughs> right. uh, I would be, I'd be interested to hear how that one turns out now. So you know, keep keep You're us posted. The only one, myself included. Um, yeah. I'd say there'll be a lot of beverages consumed <laughs> before I even hey, do. Whatever that. works. I know when I was doing the the coaching course that I did. Um, one of the coaches on it was a lady called Chloe Madonis and she's Argentinian and she's just so funny. I just loved her because her some of her advice was just so wacky and off the wall. But, you know, she would have people on the call be like, you know, I'm really shy and I can't ask somebody out on a date. So their homework would be to go and ask three people out every day. And, you know, in the States, like they'd be much better, you know, they'd be more forward about asking people out on dates. But it's like, they're all going to say no. So you just have to get over the fact that people are going to say no. And you know what? 
like play by numbers. Eventually somebody might just say yes, but that was their homework was just keep asking people out, keep hearing no. And eventually you just desensitize to it. And it's like, yeah, whatever, no. Whereas that's the fear, isn't it? The fear that you're going to be rejected, that somebody's going to say, no, I don't like you. I didn't like what you said there. And it's that rejection. But we have to stop attaching meaning to things that are outside of our control because they're outside of our control. That's it. Yeah. And now straight away, like the way my mind works is when I set myself a challenge to overcome a fear, uh, straight away, I'm like, well, is that you controlling the situation again? I'm literally having this conversation right now in here. So it's like, well, if you don't ask somebody out, then you're not controlling. So I swear I'm not schizophrenic. It's uh, but this is just literally my inner narration that's going on right now. Yeah, as you and I are talking. Um, we talk ourselves out of a lot of things. Mm. But I think I reckon I really do want to experience asking somebody out because um, I really want to understand, uh, you know, from a guy's point of view, and tradition has had it where it's always been up to the male, really, you know, to, to cross that room and, and ask her out. Um, I really want to feel and understand what that is actually fully like. Um, and that way, then I have in place an outcome on the end result. Yeah. Or it's you trying to control the situation. Shit. <laughs> yeah. Shit. I forgot you can do the same as me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so if if fear or you know beliefs or limiting beliefs they weren't in your way, if there was nothing stopping you, what would you do? If there was nothing stopping me, what would I do? Oh, do you know, is it going to sound like a, a little bit too phrased and hallmarky if I say dance like nobody's watching? Oh, um, yeah. But well, would you not you know, do that anyway? I, re I really would love to, to reach that point of um, I think I will always care. I will always, you know, consider what people think of me negative, positive and, and mediocre. But for me internally, I really would like to experience and grasp life um, and do it my way without, you know, considering what are people thinking of me? What are people looking at right now? I really just kind of want to just let the hair down, have a lot of fun, continue to be authentic and possibly dance like nobody is watching. Um, and, you know, I think if we practice that, if you just, I know that I've always been somebody who, if everybody else is zigging, I just instinctively want to zag. If something's in fashion, well, I don't want to wear it, but I will want it in five years time when it's out of fashion, when you can't get it. But so what are you often, wearing these days, Tracy? <laughs> no, 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 no. It's up, up top for business, down below for cleaning. That's the new, that's the new in, you know, tatty sandals that have been chewed by the dog. That's so sexy. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, you know, but I, I, when I'm when I'm in it and when I'm just being true, I know that I find I just go with my own flow and I do what feels right for me. And they're always the things that kind of feel the easiest. Um, whereas when I'm starting to let outer influences you know, especially with being in business, there's a very set um, path that you're meant to take in terms of, you know, marketing your business, growing your business. You need to do this. You need to build around your story. You need to do that. Oh, look at, you know, some of my friends who know me will tell you that I am so allergic to this. And it just it actually annoys me. I get cross when people start saying you need to do this and you need to do that because it feels so fake. It has always felt if I have to force it, it just feels fake. So, but you're, you know, it's, it's trying to, but then you sort of like, oh, but I'm not doing that. So maybe that's not why this is happening. Maybe I better do this because everybody else is saying that this is what I'm doing, but I'm doing it and I hate doing it. So I think you get into a habit of being you 
And that's where I'm finding is I'm just getting into a stronger habit of being myself. And the more that I do that, the easier it is to dance like nobody's watching or not care whether they're watching or not, you know? Interesting. Yeah. So you just have to get into the habit of being yourself. And I love the fact that when it comes to business, as you said, there's a particular path that we're all meant to go down. Um, and I love that it's a peeve of yours because it's equally one of mine. Um, every, you know, businesses at the end of the day, we all fall under a category or an industry, but your USP needs to genuinely be unique. Um, and sometimes your way is the best way. Um, and to always kind of rein back to your value and why you set the business up. What is the culture and the mission and the vision of, of your, your business? What is the vision? Where would you like to be? What do you want to be most known for? Um, you know, and it's like I, I'm even having that inner conflict with myself as well about do I have to go online? Do I have to portray myself online? Um, and then COVID happened. So, yes, it would be foolish of me not to. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, luckily, locally, um, you know, and, and further afield as well, it's, it's recommendations and word of mouth. But then I always fear what if that doesn't continue to happen and grow? But I would have come under like a lot of criticism when I first started out because luckily I have several hats that I can wear. I can teach, I can train, I can lecture, I can mentor, I can do HR, I can do finance, I can do business management, I can do business development. I also teach music. There's so many hats there. And people Don't say, you, yeah. <laughs> but people say to me, oh, you need to focus on one thing. No. And if I had focused on one thing, I would be struggling right now to keep a roof over my head. Thankfully, with the few hats that I have, um, it keeps it buried. It keeps it interesting, um, you know, and it gives me kind of like a broader, a broader audience as well. Um, but especially and I just, through COVID. I do think that we don't know. I mean, if ever there's been nobody has there's never been certainty we just thought there was certainty because we had a routine but you know in business or in anything that we're doing you know what is your vision i don't know i'm just playing around with it to see what where it goes you know what's fun do i like it do i not like it oh, that didn't work okay cool move on to something else and if you're following a very structured set path it stifles creativity and it blocks the flow of inspiration and intuition and wisdom because you're so stuck on this set path. So for me, not being caught up in this, is the way you have to do it this way, has actually proved to be of benefit in terms of it has allowed my mind to see other things and see other possibilities. Will they all work out? No, probably not. But hey, give it a go. That's the thing. Um, you know, it's kind of, you almost kind of have to surrender sometimes. Um, just like, you know, getting out of our own way. We just kind of have to let it in, let it in, let it go, give into it a little bit and just kind of surrender. Um, yeah. You know, I, I was at a mindfulness conference at the weekend um, with college and it was basically, you know, like a leaf falling from a tree. You know, and um, it's kind of, that's stuck with a couple of people right now. And it's, yeah, that sounds lovely, actually. Yeah. Kind of, you know, there, in the wind, finding in the its wind, own. There is what is, and there is resistance to it. Yeah, that too. Yeah, you know, stubbornness for sure. That's another yeah. Aryan, another Aryan trait. Yeah, and I guess it, it, a lot of these, the, the habits that are serving me now, um, in particular with my thinking and with my state of being, they have been, they've been hard earned because I've had to let go of so many old, stubborn, <clears throat> uh, fiery <laughs> ways. <laughs> that And, you know, okay, my determination, it's it, it, it goes well, but, you know, and allowing people to help or allowing myself to ask for help. That has been a game changer. I don't know, is that something that you would struggle with as well? 
Definitely. And I think isn't it great to have the opportunity or the chances to even being able to try things differently um, and being able to ask and allowing help in as well. If we'd stayed closed off in our in our previous set ways and previous closed mindsets, we wouldn't have had this opportunity. So, um, you know, quite appreciative of the, the growth and development that I'm going through. And since I've started even it over even in the last couple of weeks of allowing myself to being to being and feeling vulnerable even though i didn't realize it at the time it's just amazing how better aligned my environment is around me with the people that i'm aligning with right now and just the strength i feel from that so it's almost like when you start to let things go wow um it really is quite powerful and there's, the, I, the, I always see there's an element of when you decide to step up, like when you kind of go, oh man, I don't want to do that. It makes me feel uncomfortable. Don't make me do it. I just want to stay at home. Uh, but when you actually kind of just just do it and you you go for it, I think you are putting it out. You're, you're saying to the universe, yeah, I am shit serious about this. And, and it, it sits up and listen, but if you're sitting sort of doing your affirmations and doing your vision boards and just thinking about it, it's not enough. You have to just grab the bull by the horns and you have to push yourself out there. And I think when you do, and the you, the universe sees that and it goes, okay, you're now you're serious. And I think that's when the right people start to gravitate in as well. Yeah. And those that aren't, they, they just, kind of go they just tend to fizzle off and it's as it's meant to be that you know it doesn't have to be forced there doesn't have to be this big right I need to set boundaries and I need to do that I think it just happens very organically yeah. that you you're allowing these new people in because you're making space for them that's you it. know and you're not necessarily you know going out there to create it it's just happening. The more that you're letting shed away, um, just like that tree again with the leaves, it's, I, I just can't get over, you know, just in the last few weeks alone, um, just how incredible people are around me and mm. um, just how, you know, the, the circle around me, just the quality of it, you know, it's, um, and some really beautiful things have been happening that's just really, really touched me. And I'm like, wow, you know, it's really but, and I think you have to be ready because I know that if I would have met some of the people that I'm meeting now a few years ago, I would have hated them all because I because they would oh, think they're annoying me, those people, because they're all so confident and they know what they're doing. But that's only because I was a dick, you know, it's not a <laughs> reflection of anybody else. You know? Yeah, there's, there's definitely a comment. Well, I can say that about myself. It's not being self-deprecating or judgmental. <laughs> it is what it is. No, I'm not a dick anymore most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> but for me, I've even found it's, you know, on first impressions, those that I mightn't have liked when uh, I first met them. First judgment and first impressions. Yes. It's ended up being my best friends. Yeah. And, you know, when I talked to all, I was like, you know, I didn't like you when I first met you. You know, I felt the same about you. And it's like, look at us now, you know. It's, yeah. Uh, but, you, you know, not many people get to evolve and develop, Tracy. So we're. we're no, they don't. Happy. And you know what else? I was listening to um, Mario Rosenstock a couple of weeks ago on at the Sunday Roast. And he was talking about an author whose name it just went out of my head but this author is in his 90s now and one of his best friends is David Attenborough so apparently he was writing a piece in a paper and he and David Attenborough were having a conversation and in it he said to him why aren't we dead and uh, David because they're both in their 90s and David Attenborough said I don't know I'm too busy to die I'm off to Lapland now on some adventures so he came to the conclusion that they both had a boyish curiosity of the world and that it was that curiosity had never died and as I was listening to it I just thought ah oh, you haven't even started girl like you haven't even started learning what there is to know out there you're you're just a baby you're just on and I just got such a fizz of excitement through me with the knowledge of what I have yet to learn that it was just it was amazing and I just thought 
isn't that a great way to be it's like you said not everybody does not everybody ever change you know far too many people stay as they were they never get to experience the beauty the joy the fulfillment the the connection that comes from growth and and that's really sad it is yeah. unfortunately um but it takes a lot of courage as well from somebody to make the first step to you know want to initiate or facilitate a change as well so um i firmly believe that people like yourself or myself or mm -hmm. any of our clients that we coach that takes a lot of courage to come to people like us and to sit with us and to explore the opportunities of change and what change can mean mm -hmm. um I remember last year i'd say nearly nearly every month last year um there were so many people splitting up around me um you know people who i was friends with but people who were clients of mine i'm like oh my god am i a homewrecker like what what is going there was just why what were you doing laura <laughs> a whole space of people splitting up and i'm like it really kind of knocked me for six i went oh not another one you know i'm the common denominator here but i would like for those that don't know laura and i are both single parents so that's what she means is that her singleness was rubbing off on people not that she was going <laughs> around as a temptress okay just for clarification i assume that's what you mean anyway no <laughs> okay anyway let's not go there probably not painting myself really here uh, in a good light right there it's like no don't go to Laura she splits people up <laughs> but no that's not what I meant but it was just for them to even identify um and you know this could have just been even just business or career coaching it wasn't anything life um based either it was people took the decision to to you know go their separate ways with what wasn't serving them well um and i just kind of in reflection then on the year i just went wow that is courage that is huge courage because we're just there to facilitate and listen mm -hmm. um you know support and all of that and but that's huge um that, that that's massive courage um and yeah hopefully now um living a better fulfilled life or certainly on the path but um yeah it's in coaching coaching is just it's, it can it's so magical uh there's a question here laura do you feel like people roll their eyes when you've got so many things happening it knocks my confidence sometimes because i am super curious and learn lots too and shrink in front of some people i'm not Could sure again, Tracy? yeah do you feel like people roll their eyes when you've got so many things happening? Uh, okay, so you were talking about how you've got so many different hats and, yeah. you know, that people try to say, oh, you've just, you can only focus on one thing. So, yes. Do you feel yes. they roll their eyes? A so, Mark, bit. Yeah. And that's possibly where, you know, my own stubbornness might have served me well. Um but no, actually, it wasn't. So I didn't. I didn't want to leave a lot of my hats go either. They serve me well, and I genuinely love doing every single one of them. I just can't do every single one full time. Although, as time has gone by, at the moment I'm full time coaching. So, uh, and I miss teaching the kids, and I miss teaching, um, you know, music, and I miss the training, and I teach business courses, and I do miss that because I'm a very social creature as well i like like being part of a room but yeah they do um and i think again it's where you have to come back to what serves you well you know who is the person right now who's rolling their eyes at are they advising you are they mentoring you are they family never never speak to a, a, a family person in relation to your career or business um they just don't get it at all at all um and as i said it's only kind of finding your own circle like tracy you're in galway and i'm in cork um mm -hmm. and i met you in cork last year and it's kind of only been really since the COVID have we really had the time to you know really connect and it's like wow um yeah and you've been a soundboard for me so it's that's what matters uh your and soundboards you, are and you going meet to roll eyes 
and you know, I see like Linda who asked that question, she's in Scotland and uh, she and another very good friend, Loretta, who's in upstate New York, we met through the coaching course and we have become best friends through Zoom. Yes, we have met each other in real life, but only after a couple of years of knowing each other through Zoom. So, you know, wow. I think when you put it out there, the, the right people just start to come into your life when you're, um, and they are the people that that lift you up. They give you the whoosh up to to get give you that momentum. Yeah, yeah. they really do. Um, and even in my own college course, right now I'm doing a huge different coaching psychology, and there is just the best bunch of people um like everybody we, we're just so connected and we can be so ourselves and vulnerable in front of each other and that for me is where most of my learning is coming from and they always kind of look to me i think one of them said you're like the godfather of the group because i already coach and a lot of the people in this course don't coach they could be an executive or they're in an organization or they're making a career change or a career transition um but the circle of friends even that I've made from that course, it's um, it's just been phenomenal when you're around the right people. For me, uh, because I think this this year, yeah, definitely. I think when January happened and you're looking at the year ahead and the year that's just gone by and resolutions, I'm like, OK, here I am, a lone parent. Now I'm self-employed. What's all this self and loneliness about? And here I am in isolation, but I've never felt less lonely um, in mm. my life, being honest. So it's it's having the right people, the right working environment, the right the right home, the right, you know, everything, friends, relationships. Yeah. Um, it, it really is starting to align. It's just been magnificent. Um, you know, touch wood and all of that. Um, no, yeah. no, no. That's it's that's coming from the inside, Laura. Yeah. The outside is just the reflection of what is going on on the inside. So it's like I said, you have those habits and you start to continue with those habits. It will continue to reflect on everything that you see on the outside. So don't yeah. no touching wood. There'd be none none of that nonsense on my watch, and not as long as I'm around <laughs> anyway. So. I have to knock it into your head. <laughs> you're looking you're in cork. So yeah. if people want to get in touch with you, Laura, how can they reach out to you? I can um, put uh, links in the comment box afterwards as well. LinkedIn um, is my best platform, um, especially from a work point of view. Um, and I've just started more recently on Instagram. So, uh, but LinkedIn is the platform that. For, for yeah, you're loving Instagram, aren't you, Laura? <sighs> <laughs> I joined, I think I'm three weeks on Instagram. Um, it's, I'm, do you know what? There's a little bit of fun with it because. That's the it, thing. It's all, because everything has just got, I LinkedIn has just got way too serious for me now. And there's just too, I'm like, nah, I'm out of here. The party is over, so the party is kind of on link in on Insta at the moment, and that's anything where there's a bit of a smile and a bit of cheeriness. I think is just I would much rather surround myself with that. Yeah, um, I need humor, and I need you know yeah. as, as serious as I am in my profession, and I do take it very seriously, um, and it is very res results driven as well. But as serious as I am with my professional life, I have to balance it off um and i am the biggest kid you know my own child is genuinely more mature and probably sensible i hope you can't hear that um, <laughs> but, but he knows it mine he knows isn't it. so i'm not even going to claim to that i haven't seen my son since this whole thing started i think he's up in his room someplace he comes down and grunts every so often when he's hungry but i saw him on camera one time in a <laughs> part of the <laughs> SOS <laughs> group and I just had the, the biggest skit. I think yeah. the whole group, I was like, oh, I love this. It's I know, he's a messer. Yeah, he, I, I have no idea something. where he got that from. But you see straight away how, you know, I remember him. Um, and yeah. he'll always, he'll be that pink hoodie. Um, and it's like, oh, Tracy, you look, you look different. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh, Lord, is, like, great. Listen, I have loved, loved, loved chatting to you. And um, 
as as Laura said, you can connect with her on LinkedIn and um or through me if you need to get her contact details but uh this has been lovely i've really enjoyed chatting to you it's just like we've had a chat except we've done it live on air for the it world. wasn't until you asked linda's question i went oh shit i forgot people were um, watching <laughs> <laughs> and that's the way it should be you know that is the way that it should be because yeah. it, it's more enjoyable then and sure look just a bit of crap you know? tracy when is your own course starting I have a mini online program starting tomorrow and there are a couple of spaces left on that. Um, so that's just over three days, um, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. It's an hour a day. And it's really just for anybody who needs to invest in a little bit of self-care. So it's called your first aid kit to survive and thrive in isolation. And the details are on my Facebook page. And um yeah, but I do. It, it's just a little mini course. I am in the process of developing a um, a more robust online program. So I don't know what that's going to be yet. We'll just figure it out as but we I go think, along. I think many there'll be something be to do with face and fears. Sorry, <laughs> I'm sure. Well, but I think many is more effective right now during these times. Um, so yeah, it is. There. That's about all the attention span that that people have right now. So, yeah. Um, yeah so that's that's I'm kind of cool with that. But uh, that sounds amazing. Yeah. What time starts tomorrow? What time? Starts tomorrow. It's five o'clock for one hour, and um, it's a small group. I'm keeping it intimate because I want it to be a nice little support network for yeah. people. And it won't be just me talking. So everybody else will be able to contribute as well. And we'll just have it to be a bit of fun. I can guarantee that. Whatever else. Sometimes I talk about stuff that's deep and it's serious, but there has to be humor in there as well. Yeah. You have to break yeah. it down as well with humor. Laura, lovely chatting to you. And thank you to everybody that popped on to have a look. And thank you for all your lovely comments. And I will be back soon. So watch this space. I have loads of exciting guests lined up for Yay. the coming weeks. Yeah, no, it's, I told you, it is my show now. <laughs> and um, to listen, this, this is my moment. This is my moment. Give it to me. <laughs> Give me my moment. <laughs> No, I don't think anybody needs to hear that. <laughs> All right. Uh, good night, everybody. See you soon. Bye. Thanks. Bye.